welcome. I am really excited about today's video because this is the artist choice demo. So you all had a chance this week to vote and thank you for your votes. I really appreciate it. And basically two and three came in almost neck and neck. Maybe there was like 10 uh, votes that separated the two. So I'm probably going to end up painting both for you at some point, but I'm going to start off with the clear, the winner, which was number two, which was this um, beach scene. I think a lot of you mentioned they want to see rocks, they want to see water, and they want to see trees. Um, I want to just point out that I will be covering trees in November and water sometime in the new year in depth. So I will touch on these in this demo, but this is this demo is basically uh, not going to be about any specific thing, but just overall the, the big picture. Um, so, how do you begin? Well, I'm, gonna, I'm going to uh, always try to begin by observing my reference, whether it be a photo or wh whether it's from real life, and coming up with my story. I need to know what I want to express in the painting before I dive right into it. And a lot of times we just take our photo and start to try to copy it, and we don't really think about what we want to accomplish. And so I'm looking at my photo here, and by the way, it was taken last fall somewhere in Maine. Um, it was before the, the foliage really started going, so there's tiny hints of color. I might enhance that a little bit more in my painting. Um, but basically, uh, what I'm drawn to in this photo is that idea of the first crisp fall day when things are starting to change, the temperature starting to drop just a little bit, and it's the excitement of the clarity of a crisp fall day. And so that's my concept. After I come up with that idea, I have to look at my reference and I have to determine what is it in this photo do I want to keep in, what do I want to leave out, what do I want to uh, downplay a little bit, and where, it, what areas do I want to clarify a little bit more. And I just want to point out to you that back in, I think it was January and February, in page, on my Patreon page, I covered in depth the idea of editing your photo and creating thumbnails. So if you're new to the page or you want a refresher on this idea of creating value thumbnails and editing your reference photo, head on back to my home page and you can look for the tags on the, on the side of the page and you can look for value thumbnails or editing, that kind of thing, and you'll be able to find those. I'll try to put a link uh, in the description today, uh, but I really encourage you guys to go back and review this area of creating value thumbnails because it truly is the key to having a successful painting. So once I evaluated my photo, I did my value thumbnail. So if you look over here, it's a, just a very simple photo a thumbnail where I take everything in the photo and I simplify it in just a few big simple shapes. So in other words, all the trees become one value and they happen to be a dark value. The water and the sky happen to be the light value and the wet sand versus the dry sand are two different values. So there is how I determined. And this is based on, loosely on John Carlson's Theory of angles. So if you need to have a brush up on that, again, I covered it back. I believe it was January. Again, I'll put a link in there. But it's very important that you take this time to create a nice strong value thumbnail because this is actually what I'm going to use to start the painting. So I'm going to put the value thumbnail up here. I'm not going to look at the photo. I will put the photo up in just a minute. I know a lot of you have said, why don't you have the photo here so we can see it as you paint? Well, a couple reasons. One, I just never thought of it, but two, I really don't look at the photo once I start painting. I really don't. I want to interpret a photo. I don't want to copy a photo. So if it's right there in front of me, I tend to want to copy it. If it's not where I'm looking at, right at it, I tend to interpret more. I, I tend to paint from my heart more than trying to be precise and copy. So those are a couple reasons why I do that. The next thing I did in the planning stage was to pick my pastel palette. I always do this because it allows me to keep a simple, harmonious color palette. And I probably have more pastels than I'm going to use on this tray, but let's just talk about what I have. I have my darks, and these will be the darks that I'll have in the trees and in the sand. I have my sky and watercolor, 
over here. I have my greens that'll be for the trees and remember I said that the foliage was starting to turn so I've incorporated some yellows and oranges for that and these are just harder pastels that I can use to have a little bit finer detail should I need them. Now I'll tell you this is the exact same palette that I used for my step-by-step -step demo that'll be coming up later in the week so uh, I like to reuse palettes whenever I can. Okay, so I'm going to get started on the painting, and the first thing I'm going to do is, using a pencil, draw in my horizon line, and then I'm going to draw in those big simple shapes. And what I'm looking at is the thumbnail and not the photo. If I looked at the photo, I can guarantee you I'd put in way more detail than I actually need at this stage in the painting. So I'm just basically copying what I see in my reference photo, or excuse me, in my thumbnail, rather than the reference photo. Alright, so now I have the big simple shapes just like I have in my thumbnail. The next part of the painting process is the underpainting. So we just spent a month or two on underpaintings. Again, you need to review that if you're new to the page. Um, but I look at this and I say, what could I do in an underpainting that would help make this painting more interesting or exciting? And I thought, well, there's an awful lot of blue in here, and I do want to hint at fall foliage. So what if I just use orange for the underpainting colors? So what I did was I selected four values of orange, an orange-yellow basically, a dark, a light, and two middle values, and they're pretty close together, but I think it'll work. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply, using the thumbnail as my guide, block in these shapes. I'm using New Pastel, which is a harder pastel. And those are the darks. And can I ask you, my photographer, to get me a piece of pipe insulation foam that I forgot? Now I'm going to block in the lightest value, which is the sky and the water. Thank you. Next, I'm going to ask myself what, what is the, the, um, the, the middle light value, which is the dry part of the sand here, and the middle dark value. Oops, that's not the right one. This is really, really close. In fact, they're probably the same. I don't know what happened there. So what I'm going to do is, because I selected two that actually when I put them on the paper look very similar, I want this to be a little darker, so I'm going to throw some of the dark in there just to remind me that this part of the sand is going to be a little darker. And you know, sometimes you have in a plan and it doesn't always work out the way you intend. Alright, now the next thing I'm going to do is take my pipe insulation foam, or you can use any kind of blending tool. And I'm going to blend in this first layer of pastel. Once I blend in this first layer of pastel, I'm going to get rid of that piece of foam. I'm not going to use it again. A lot of times we use these blending tools as if they were erasers. and. Uh, you don't really erase with a blending tool. What you end up doing is making mud. So, but I am using it in this case because I want a nice, soft, out of focus underpainting. And now I will know where to put the, the focus. So I'm going to put my photo back up so that you can see what I am looking at, but not really looking at. And I'm going to put my glasses on. So the first thing I do now that I have the underpainting in place, and by the way, this is UART paper. I could have very easily done a wet underpainting with alcohol or water or something like that. But uh, I don't want to wait for anything to dry, so I used a dry underpainting. Dry wash, I call it. First thing I'm going to do is block in or reinforce those dark areas. And the darkest things in this photo are those trees. Now, I will start looking at the tree shapes a little bit more clearly in the photo so that I can get an interesting arrangement of tree shapes. Remember, you want your trees to have, uh, you want them to be asymmetrical. In other words, not all the same shape, size, with the same spacing in between them. 
I'm also going to take the dark while I have it and I'm going to darken just the edges of these banks. It's not really like that in my reference photo, but I think if I start out a little darker than I want, I can always uh, pull it back in. Now, you might be asking yourself, what about all those rocks? What are you doing about all those rocks? Well, the rocks are small, so that means I'm going to very be able to put them right on top of the sand. So I'm going to actually paint the sand first, and then worry about the rocks. What I'm doing now is I'm going over those dark shapes with another pastel that's the same dark value that happens to be a dark blue. What I'm trying to do is make a more interesting um, variety of dark, so it's not all the same. I'm going to reinduce that dark orange that's in the underpainting, and I think now I'm going to go ahead and put in the dark green. Again, I could have painted this whole, all the trees dark green, because they pretty much are, but if I did that, I wouldn't have an interesting variety in the darks. So I'm taking the time to build up layers of color, which is, after all, that's what the beautiful part of, the beauty of pastel is that we have this ability to layer. I got my tape a little too close. There we go. So now I have all my darks in place. Uh, what I'm going to do is develop the tree line a little bit more, and then I'll address the sky. So I look at the tree line, and I see there's a, quite a big variety of greens still in this scene. Um, there's distant trees, and I'm going to use cooler, more gray down greens to paint this distant tree line. because so I want them to feel like they are further back. But then these trees in the foreground can use, make use of some warmer greens and warmer colors. So I have a, this happens to be a um, warm yellow green, but it's very dark. Let's see if I have a, um, there's a warmer yellow green. I won't put this warmer yellow green in the distance because then it would look, make these trees come forward and I don't want that to happen. Let's see, what else do we have as far as green? I'm, I'm just putting in some of these green trees right now and I'm not going to really talk about how I'm painting trees. We're going to save that for next month. But you can, you can pretty much see what I'm doing is I'm using very loose what I call, what I would call gestural marks to suggest the foliage in these trees. Now remember I said I wanted this to feel like there's a little bit of fall happening, so why don't we add a little bit of orange in this tree mass so we can hint at the, the changes that are starting to take place in these trees. There was a really interesting area down in here. I'm going to put it in while I'm thinking of it. I like how some of these along the shoreline, uh, some of this green is more like they're bushes of some sort. I'm going to put those in right now. Alright, now I have enough going on in the trees. And also, uh, Helper, would you mind getting my workable fix it in? I thought I was prepared. Now I'm going to paint the sky. This is the Blair Low Odor, very low odor workable fixative. And I'm going to, right now I'm going to spray these trees because I want to give, and I'll spray the sand while I'm at it, I want to give an illusion of texture without painting every single leaf because they're kind of far back. Now look what's happening in the underpainting. Doesn't it look like it's almost like a sunset scene? I mean, wow, like I, if, I, if I wasn't doing this for a video, I might say, you know, I could make this into sunset. It doesn't have to be what's in the photograph. And the underpainting is kind of leading me in that direction. So I guess what I'm trying to say is listen to your painting. I'm not going to listen this time though. Because I want to show you how I paint a nice blue sky. Uh, but if the painting is telling you, you know what, hey, this could be a cool sunset scene. Go for it. Uh, you already have the photo, so you know why not interpret it the way you want to. So I started off with a fairly dark blue. I don't want it to be quite this dark, 
But I know that in these sky hole areas, they have to be a little bit darker than the surrounding sky color. So I'm actually using this darker blue to start to carve into the tree shape. And a little bit more in here. We will talk about sky holes in much more depth next month. As I come towards the horizon, I see and I know that the sky is going to get lighter and cooler. So I'm introducing a light blue-green as I come closer to the horizon. And again, using it as a tool to carve into my tree shapes. So you notice that my tree shape started off kind of like big lumps, like the lumps of clay. And now I'm using the negative painting or what's behind. That's a really funky tree shape that I'm going to have to fix. But we will get there. And again, much lighter as I come to the horizon. Okay. Now I'm going to hold off on painting the water, but I want to. One of the beautiful, uh, beautiful things about keeping your palette out is I know exactly what color I want to put in the water because I have it out already. So there's my sky. All right. Now I'm going to address the sandy banks and then. Um, fix the trees much better, a little bit better. So there's a um, there's some sand in the di in the distance here, and I'm going to start off with a dark tan color. It's jutting out just a little bit in there, and I'm going to underpaint this dark color. But then where I see that the sand is wet, I'm going to use a darker value of this kind of dull tan color. Darker value in here. And I'm going to scumble it over this nice rich dark area that I already put down. I'm not going to paint rocks just yet. Um, I'm going to add a little dull violet to this sand just because um, It'll make it from being just too brown. So the dull violet looks like sandy color, but it's a little bit prettier, I would say. Again, I'm not painting rocks, but I am starting, I picked up a dark purple, and what I'm doing now is I'm starting to create some darker areas that might be rocks. Now, what you're noticing is I'm just making little tiny marks of dark. These are the base for the rocks. I'm not copying the rocks just as they are in the photo, but instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the rocks kind of draw your eye up into the painting. So where I place the rocks are not random. I'm, I want them to lead you into the painting. And there's little tiny rocks back in the distance. And I'm going to put those in right now. All right. So now I have the base for the sand. What am I going to do about that color? That That is... Um, um, the light sand, where the light, where the light is hitting the sand. And I'm going to go ahead and put some yellow in there. Okay, now I know you're saying, what? What are you doing with the yellow? Well, I want there to be interesting color underneath the sand. And there's some yellow and some peach highlights on some of these rocks. So I'm going to put a little yellow and a little peach in that dry part of the sand. And I'm going to start to use this peach to put highlights on some of the rocks. I think before I do, before I jump too far into the highlights, I'm putting in a mid-value color on top of those dark bits that I had. Rocks are just marks. So you start with a dark, you go with a mid, and then you hit it with the light, like so. And you just have to know where the shadow side is, and you have to know where the dark side is to use the shadow part of the rock. And you want to paint the rocks using angles and big marks. If you make them like this, they're going to look like potatoes. So angles, hard edge, wide marks are going to give you the most effective rocks. All right. Before I go much further on this, I want to just point out that I have to change the sand color in the distance. It has to get lighter and duller because it's further back. So I'm just using a dull tan 
actually going to put in a uh, kind of a dull uh, purple color back in there. And now I'm going to put in the water. And with the water, I'm going to take the sky and flip it over the water, like in my mind, which means that in the distance, we will have the lightest water. And I'm using horizontal, my foot is a little bit too close there, horizontal bands to paint the water. If I didn't paint the water, I'm going to move that. If I didn't paint the water with horizontal bands, then it wouldn't lay flat like water. So horizontal bands to paint the water. And I'm okay about leaving some of the uh, underpainting showing. It kind of adds to the feeling of the water. Let's, let's drag some of that blue on top of the rocks to make it look like it's got wet. And by dragging, I just mean use a very, very light touch right there. All right, so now I have the whole thing blocked in. It's just time to reflect. Where am I on time? Uh, let's see if I have time to refine it. 20. I'm at 20 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and refine it. Now remember I sprayed some of that workable fixative, right? Now look what's happening. When I put these colors, these greens, on top of the areas that were fixed, you can see how it just kind of, the pastel skips over. i got to change this tree as the, not a very pretty looking tree. And the pastel just skips over and creates this wonderful illusion of foliage without me having to paint every bit of foliage. Uh, every single leaf. I like the little bit of lighter one. So now I have a feeling of, of uh, fall going on. Shouldn't there be some fall going on in the distance? Sure, why not? But it has to be lighter and it has to be duller. It can't be, it, it can't put a bright orange one back there. I don't think it'll read as well. Let's just dull that out a little bit more. And now we want to, uh, I could probably work on the trees just a little bit more have a little bit more refining, probably come in and put a few indications of some trunks in here, like so, with the side of my pastel. Now let's refine some of these rocks. So I'm going to take my Terry Ludwig eggplant, what I call a super dark, and darken some of those rocks in the foreground. Oh, that's supposed to be water right there. Darken some of the rocks in the foreground area. And I want to uh, address this with a little bit of a, I think the violet works good for in here. And we want to hit it with some sunlight. So I'm going to use a nice yellowy orange to get some sunlight on the sand. Maybe a little bit of a, a peachier feeling will be a little bit sunnier. There we go. And hit some of these rocks with some highlights. Again, not everywhere, because if it's everywhere, your eye's not going to know exactly where to look. So just on some of them so that your eye kind of picks up on the highlighted rocks and travels into the painting. And then in the distance, those lights will get a little bit lighter and duller and smaller. So I'm going to add some highlighted rocks back in the distance here. And if it's a really, really rocky beach like this one is, you'll add a little bit more highlighted areas. I'll put some right in here. The next thing that I'm going to do for the painting is step away from it. And I know this drives you all crazy because you're like, why can't you just finish the painting? on the camera. Well, because if I did, I probably wouldn't end up with a very good painting. Because when I'm trying to talk and trying to make those final corrections, it's, it's hard to do both. 
I have to step away just as you guys need to step away from your paintings when you get to a certain point in the painting. If you keep working on a painting and you don't take time to evaluate it, you're going to end up overworking it. You're going to end up ruining areas that are working actually for you. So this is the time where I'm going to step away and spend a few minutes and then I'll, I will uh, fix it and add things and I'm going to add those and um, explain them in the post. Now when I get my new equipment, I will be able to edit video, but right now my uh, old dinosaur of a computer does not allow me to easily edit, so I have to do it this way, I hope you understand. But the main thing for this demo was how do you start, how do you take this photo and interpret it so that it says how you feel about it, not copying what it looks like exactly. So stay tuned for the finish and I hope you enjoyed this demo.